Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals, synthetic colorants, and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. I believe women deserve to know what they are putting in their bodies and why. So at four months pregnant, I quit my job to reinvent the prenatal vitamin. We scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies and third-party tested for heavy metals and microbes. And this year, we were awarded the Purity Award from the Clean Label Project, the supplement safety certification that tests for 200 harmful chemicals and toxins. With Ritual, you'll know where your ingredients come from and why we use them. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast. This is Make It Plain. Make It Plain. M-I-P. With Masamela Matsuma. Mark Thompson. Make It Plain. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the founder of the Democratic Coalition. We did a lot of work together uh, leading up to November 3rd. A lot of good work, too. And he's guided us all throughout this whole ordeal, getting rid of Trump with the impeachment task force and all of that. I think we have another impeachment task force now uh, in place. So we're going to hear about all of that. Also, the host of the podcast, the Dworkin Report. He's on Twitter. You know and love him at Funder. Scott Dworkin joins us once again for MIP. Hey, buddy. Happy 2021. Yeah, welcome to it. Happy 2021. It's been a crazy uh, year. You didn't think it could get worse, and then it gets better and worse every day. So I'm asking all my friends, were you going through like a post-Trump uh, uh, trauma uh, syndrome disorder on inauguration day. Like, were you looking at it and enjoying it, and then like fearing that someone was going to come from behind the curtain and say, "Psych, I'm still here." I mean, did, did you go through that? Because I kind of went through that. It was too good to be true. Yeah, I mean, like it was it was hard <laughs> to enjoy because I I mean last last inauguration. Well, I mean one of the inaugurations I got to stand next to the the then president the day of you know, after his first dance with Obama, um, it was much different this time. And she can't really feel the wind because you're not there in person. You can't interact with people. Um, so it, that adds to the stress behind it. And then the pandemic, you can't even celebrate with friends and family, really. Um, so it doesn't seem as real. And uh, so, yeah, I, I definitely had that. I still, you know, up to that minute, we were still... We, we had our eye on everything and we were just making sure that, you know, this is going to happen. We weren't worried about security. We weren't worried about that at all um, at that point. But we were worried about, you know, what's he going to try and do? What's he going to try and say? We didn't expect for the wind to be taken out of the sails and his boat to sink like immediately. We didn't, we didn't expect that. Now we, we guess that he'll come back in some form, but, um, you know, his reign of terror is over. Obviously there's people left over in his wake that, um, are detrimental to our society, but we can we can worry about them next. So the, the boat sank immediately. Would you argue because of January six? Is that what really? Yeah, he did it to himself. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean that combined with Twitter destroyed him. Uh, and so his own people and Twitter ending that reign destroyed him. I mean that that that's what kind of ended his reign. I mean, obviously. Everything he did over the last four years, it was so awful. And, and to also be a sore loser and to try and throw a coup and to, you know, lead to now, I think it's three police officers and four civilians that were killed. Two of the police officers committed suicide after, um, the, the, the riot. Um, and now they're trying to sweep it under the rug and, um, impeachment, which he's already been impeached in the trial that's upcoming. I think that's going to be what, uh, it, 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 you know, we're going to be able to lay out a strong case for conviction. And if someone wants to vote against it, you know, the, their career in politics is probably over. Um, cause I, I do, it's worse than people could imagine. 
And I think the story needs to be told, and it will during trial. Well, and that's important, too, because even if the two-thirds aren't there, um, we're going to get this on the record. First of all, for, on the historical record, the evidence, mm -hmm. uh, that will be there 100 years from now um, in terms of him trying to incite a second civil war for no reason. Right. Uh, you know, Scott, the Civil War was about slavery. Slavery was a real thing. It was going on. Right. Uh, you were for it or you were against it. This was a civil war about nothing, nothing that was really real or exists. But it, it, you say in political careers, I mean, these characters, if if they don't hold him accountable, they've got to they've got to run for reelection, some of them in two years. So I guess they have to weigh the, the bigger risk of facing being primaried by one of Trump's protégés or being turned out. Um, by the people. It, it's kind of a catch-22. Yeah, and, th and that's why they didn't want to have the trial. That's why they, he, they didn't want him to be impeached for it, because it puts them in a position where they almost have to vote to convict. And at the same time, you know, it, it it's just funny to see the defense, uh, or if you want to call it that, the excuses that his accomplices use. You know, people need to remember that there are senators who are, who are going to be sitting in, as the jury that were accomplices to the insurrection. And so you, you, it, it's baffling how it has to be actually handled. But I'll, I'll tell you this, we've never had a better shot to convict and, and make sure he never runs for office again. Um, you know, last time when we had the impeachment trial, we didn't have the votes that were open to it. As in we, we were trying to push people who were definite against, uh, impeaching, against convicting him. Um, so we, we had a huge hill to climb. It was like, we had 11 more to go. Um, we had four or five tentative maybes plus another three on the fence Republicans. And, and so like even pushing Democrats initially with the impeachment people said, don't waste your time. This feels a little bit like this, uh, now, but the, the conviction part, we never had a chance before. We actually, we have a very real chance now because there's enough undecided votes right now. Um, that I think if, if we present the strongest case possible and people are able to express their outrage uh, to the members of Congress, then, then I think that uh, they're going to have to vote in a certain way or they're going to go down with the sinking ship. I, I think they still think that they are in this Trump land, um, but as more normal people pop up in leadership positions through the Biden administration and leadership in Congress, um, you know, they're just going to look crazier. And so... I think the American people are, are sick of it. So I take it then, uh, what you're alluding to is some of the work the impeachment task force is going to be doing. That yeah. Is reaching out, having people reach out to their members, especially those um, uh, in, in states where some of these people think it's safer for them not to vote to convict. Right. Th there is hard video evidence of what he did and what he caused on January 6th. I mean, it shouldn't even be in question. Yeah. Although, you know, he's probably dying because he's not visible in the media right now. Yeah. I, I have a hunch. What do you think? It's not even, you know, one of the things is it's not even just his words, which were enough to incite this. It wasn't just, just his words. It was his money. It was his organization. It was his people. Um, you know, it's more than just being that simple. So I want to be clear with that. It's not just he said something and they did something. It's he said something and did something before. He did, did, did something and said something during. He did something and said something afterwards. Um, you know, the, the whole timeline is just, it, anyways, I just wanted to clear that up. It's, it, there's, there's a lot more to the story and, um, you know, it was a lot more planned than we ever thought and they were a lot more involved than we ever ever thought. Um, sorry, I, I skipped over your question. No, 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 no. But, but let me ask you this. Do you think, to get back in the spotlight, he might try to testify himself at the trial? Yeah, I mean, like, that's the only chance that he has to speak to the American people again where they listen. And I don't I don't think there's another situation where it's like, oh, Trump's on TV. I'm going to listen. Uh, there really isn't another opportunity for him to try and clear his name. And he's crazy enough to do it. Um, I, I would I wouldn't recommend it if I were on this legal team. I'd be like, no, you want to stay out of the media completely. You don't want to be around this at all. You want people to say, let's just move on. Like it's time to move on. That's the kind of 
key talking point. So if he does think that he's got to go there and defend his case because it's the last time he can speak to the American people, great. I uh, I welcome that. You know, him being him being interviewed by Jamie Raskin and Eric Swalwell and Madeline Dean. I mean, like that. It just would be some nutty nonsense. I would I would love that. It'd be great if he came because we could ask him not just questions about that, but questions about what happened in Georgia and his phone call because that's part of it. Um, so it's not just it's not just that insurrection, even though that's terrible enough for not someone to, to just get impeached, but uh, we'll put him in jail, you know. And so it's it's really a long it's a long road coming, but uh, I, I don't think that he has a chance to get back into the media spotlight because the ratings aren't there, people aren't interested, and I don't think that he's going to be able to uh, revive a political career. So I, I think Republicans are going to hedge their bets. And based on intelligence that McConnell's already have, he, he, I think that that's why he's signaling I might vote to convict because he has information that we don't know yet. Um, and when that is released, I think that it'll sway some more Republicans on uh, our way because they know they can see the future a little bit. They're not going to be uh, as as stupid and blind to Trump as they usually are. And I think uh, without him hanging over the shoulder, I, I think it's really detrimental to the entire uh, party because that's what they use to distract everybody. That's what they use to get elected. That's what they use to get promoted. That's and they don't have that anymore. And so now they, they're forced to respond to things. Um, you know, if somebody does something obscene, they can't distract from it. People just keep on pounding on it and they're just not used to all of that. And without Trump on Twitter, all of that energy is then displaced onto them on top of them not having their biggest promoter on there anymore. I mean, the, the, the things that he had that he no longer has access to, I, it, he, we really, the propaganda machine has been destroyed. Uh, not completely, but you know, a, a lot of, a lot of him. And I just think the, the key is to make sure that there's no more uh, Donald Trumps that get elected to, to Congress or office anywhere. And if they do, that we push back, um, in every peaceful way possible. So you, you said McConnell is saying he might still vote to convict. Oh, yeah. 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 He's still considering. Yeah. And, and, but I, uh, but I thought he voted in, with Rand Paul that is right. Massachusetts. Sure. Sure, of course he did, and, and some people did that because um, they, they they considered it as a vote of of whether or not to dismiss it. So it wasn't really whether or not if it was, they deemed it to be unconstitutional. What they'll say is, "Oh, we shouldn't do this. It's a waste of time." And so that's the basic of like a lot of the Republicans that voted against that, kind of like acting like I'm still with you, Trump. But that that does not uh, with McConnell. I think that that's just grandstanding. Like he's really trying to muddy the waters as to where he stands. Like, um, but I, I don't think, I, I think he, he actually will vote to convict Trump. And if he were to do that, he will bring the other votes with him. There's no way that he would vote for it unless he had to vote. Yeah. 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 Uh, very, very, very interesting. It would be something for him and Deborah to testify. They could even, like they did in one of those depositions we have video of, ask him to read something. Right. <laughs> and he won't be able to read. <laughs> right. No, he wouldn't. No, we object. We're not reading this. No, absolutely. So why won't you just do sentence? Why can't you read it? Why are you fighting it, Trump? Why are you fighting it? Uh, <laughs> now, Lord have mercy. Another, t unfortunately, it takes two thirds. You need two thirds to expel a member of Congress. Mm -hmm. Homegirl is out of control. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? Marjorie Taylor and, and Scott's been tweeting up a storm about her. He's got video of her attacking, uh, 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 David Hogg, uh, correct? Yes. Uh, um, um, I, you know what I want to do? I want our listeners to hear this. I, I want to play this for our listeners. So just let's let's get this on, folks, and let's let's just hear this. You all can hear and get your reaction to it on the other side. I think this information about how you got into college, David. David, do you really think red flag gun laws are going to prevent mass shootings? Studies show that red flag gun laws do not. Okay. 
Enough is enough. We should be marching for our rights. So what's what's going on here? She's following them and attacking David Hogg and other students. So they start chanting, "Enough is enough" to drown her out. Correct? Yeah, yeah that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I mean, it, this is, I mean, this is. So she's a member of Congress doing this. What she's doing is why she's a member of Congress. No, no, no. This is before. This is, oh, this, before. is okay. like, this is this is shortly after the shooting. This is not. Oh, this is that. Not, okay, I got you. This is, that's what the most grotesque part about it is: is she's att attacking him, calling him a fraud and a coward in person, or a coward, um, and, and saying he's paid for by George Soros. Which, of course, we know George Soros, uh, his senior employee was Steve Mnuchin. So the closest tie to Soros was always Mnuchin. Um, yeah, it's it's just. Crazy conspiracy theories. Like, how did you get into college, David? Well, maybe his yeah. great grades did it. You know what I mean? Like, right, 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 right. his national profile, now international profile, leading in, in the fight against gun violence. You know, I mean, like, it's, it just was so crazy because it's not the only time that she approached him. There was another video that was uh, resurfaced yesterday that, um, you know, that presented the, a, a different angle, which was outside. And so that one was inside. And he had a lot of folks around him, a lot of students that were there to talk to senators. And just, how did you get these meetings with senators? How do you get all this media coverage? What, what are you talking about? It's because the shooting just happened at their school, and they were using the opportunity to present their case to all the senators directly. And they got the meetings because they called senators, and they I'm sure that they had people that helped them, but it's not a conspiracy. It's called an, an action. Like, it's not... So it was very, very weird. And, and you know, as I dig through... The dozens of hours of, of video that I've, I've gone through and my brain starts to, you know, fold in half and, and get very confused at, about where I am. Um, I, it gets worse. And so the further back that I go, um, and we see this in a lot of, of people that are, that are uh, radicals, uh, is it, it goes back far and it's, it's bad. Like we're talking about, um, you know, there's a video we have to where she says racism does not exist in America, verbatim, that's quote unquote. Um, you know, all lives matter and black lives matter is a, uh, activist, uh, no, what, what did she say? A Marxist organization, that kind of jargon where, you know, people say, oh, that's such a socialist communist thing where it doesn't make any sense. And so there's a lot of rants like that. Um, but then there's, there's some really profane, profane things, uh, you know, like her attacking elected officials in general and, and calling them, I, I'll say, the R, R word, a, a slur used against those with um, dis learning disabilities, and then says, well, I, I'm not trying to offend those with Down syndrome, but that's just who they are. And, and I, I was like, this is who you are. Like, seeing that video, I was like, this encapsulates who you are, which is just the, uh, the person who's not fit to be in Congress. And so, yeah, two thirds would be required. Um, and Rep. Uh, Jimmy Gomez has introduced a, a resolution to expel her from Congress. I, I don't know whether or not there's a chance or not for that to be even presented, uh, but I do know that we're pushing for it. And uh, I, I don't think that we push this hard on, a, on an action against a member of Congress in a very long time, especially not with, with Trump distracting us. And so, this is a very big effort. I, I'd be very surprised. You know, again, there's more videos coming out and we'll be sending them out and it'll be just continually coming. We're, we're not going to stand for this kind of nonsense again. We won't let someone else step into the mantle of Trumpism. Um, it's not going to happen. And so we request that she resign and if not be expelled from Congress. And if they want to keep her around and whatnot, we'll keep on presenting our argument and they can present their argument when they stay in the minority in the House and Senate and they don't move back to the White House because they embrace members of Congress like this. So here we go. Just this one too. Folks, this is her using the R word. Let's uh, uh, let's take a let's take a listen uh, to this as well. There's a wall of money right there, everybody. I mean this is like it's it's so stupid simple, it's not even funny. It's stupid, simple, but we have retards. I'm sorry. I know that's an offensive word, and I'm not trying to talk down on people with Down syndrome, but that's what these people are. These people are so stupid and ignorant 
They cannot put something common sense in place like spending the $14 billion of El Chapo drug money to build our wall. It, it's, it's nonsense. See, that's how stupid these people are that we have elected. And why do we have them? They're losers. They couldn't make it in real life if they tried. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not lying to you. These people are criminals. All, there's your wall money. So, so wait, what, what is she doing in real life? What is she, <laughs> does she have a real life, a real job? What is she, first of all, t- tell me about her district. How was she even elected in the first place? It's a very Republican district uh, in, in Georgia. And uh, she had switched districts. I think she was running against Lucy McBath and then saw that as a losing prospect and then moved over to Georgia 6th, I think, where there was a retiring Republican and won the primary by being as right as possible, um, as as racist as possible, as anti-women's rights as possible, as, you know, as pro-Trump as possible. Um, even, you know, we, we found a, a nice little 30-minute long video that we'll be releasing later today about her describing QAnon in very descriptive fashion and supporting it and explaining it. And you can see that she sort of was the QAnon whisperer, um, and this is back in 2017. So, so like I said, like this, th- yeah. that, that's grotesque. It's all terrible. Um, you know, if this is who Republicans stand for, then, you know, I think again, they'll, they'll stay in the minority. If they, if they stand for anything, especially putting her on the education committee and she just, you know, made, made fun of attack people calling them that. Um, you know, and just kind of brazenly, but yeah, I'm not trying to offend those with Down syndrome, but it's like, if you say the but there, then you're a terrible person. And I, I, you know, it's just, there's simple right and wrong with a lot of these things, and she's on the wrong side of all of it. And it, it's just, it's interesting to watch. I, it's, it's pathetic and sad, and, and I wish that, uh, you know, Kevin McCarthy stood up and removed her from the committees and pushed her to resign, because this is, this is just, there's beyond the pale. We have to have a reset. We can't accept people like this. In con- we can't. It's impossible. If we do, there will be more of them. It will be normalized. And we'll be stuck in the same position that we were, but even worse, because we'll have QAnon conspiracy theorists all over Congress and the Republican Party. And she'll gain in power. She'll help elect others across the country that are the same crazy mindset where they think some kind of cabal of pedophilia underneath a basement in a pizza parlor that doesn't exist um blah, blah, blah. like this crazy just keeps on spinning oh well you know this connects with this and this is the science for this and it's just nonsense at the same time they're sitting there and they're using this to defend against trump what they say colluding with russia which again i i, I won't go too far into but the, the trump campaign met with the Russian government during the campaign in Russia, in Moscow. Uh, and so it's just, while they were attacking the United States of America, and if Carter Page, uh, that was Carter Page, and if you, you don't think he was supposed to be investigated while they're attacking the United States, then you're already crazy at, at that point. And this, these are, this is just like, they want to have like the, the craziest conspiracy theory ever uh, assembled and try and make it look legit. And I think that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was one of these pushers. She definitely was one of the people calling uh, for violence. She called a lot of the Black Lives Matter protesters. Uh, she said that they were committing an insurrection. That's another video we'll be releasing. Um, so it's, it's just very interesting. We have her talking about Black Lives Matter protests uh, as if they're violent mobs and like all the things that she uh, promoted and then, you know, the ob- obviously terrorists then attacked the Capitol. Um, so now, um, the, she also, was she not involved? And this is the, the, the ultimate reason for her to be expelled. Was she not involved herself in inciting the insurrection? Yeah. I mean, like she, she was one of the people who stopped the steal um, she met at the White House with Trump to come up with a plan around, you know, we're not going to put up with this, telling people to uh, come on down to D.C. We're not going to stand for this, you know. And and even I, we have her explicitly on video. This is something, you know, sometimes we turn over 
uh, evidence to authorities before we release it publicly just to n not impede an investigation. And we have one of the videos where she explicitly says, we don't want to have to take up arms, but we will. And it's just like, that is what, that's what caused it. And like, you can't talk like that. Words matter, man. And, and she just doesn't get that as an elected official. And that responsibility is too high of a responsibility. We can't trust her with anything. And the American people shouldn't have to deal with her. Yeah, no, that's right. If I'm not mistaken, is she also the one that, did she try to carry a gun? That's Lauren Berber. So that's a different, that's a different one from Colorado. A different who, job. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. She's the one who's trying to carry her gun. Over. But she is, Marjorie Taylor Greene also is a big gun advocate who acts like she's going to carry her gun everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Um, that, that sort of stuff. And so she, she is, uh, one of those who advocates it, but that, that was a separate, um, person. I'm sure that, you know, Maybe she's she's either tried or, or, or something. I'm not sure if she carries or not around the, the Capitol. I don't think, I, I, would, I would hope not. Um, but uh, yeah, that was Lauren, Lauren Boger. Folks, we want you to follow the hashtag of the Task Force. We want you to follow at Funder. We want you to follow at Dem Coalition, all on Twitter. Because, you know, this is not just talk. This, this These are action items for you to get in touch with your electives. And share with them. You not only want Trump impeached, you want Marjorie Taylor Greene expelled, and for that matter, uh, I mean, there's a case to be made for for Hawley and Cruz. Yeah, too correct. Yeah, we're running a campaign against Hawley and Cruz to expel them as well and push for the resignation, and we will not stop that until it either happens or they face a, a re-election fight where we'll be, you know, fully in against them. Scott Dworkin. Also, check out the podcast, The Dworkin Report. He's our friend and brother. We're going to be doing a lot more work together. And we need you. We need every one of you to help. Tweet, retweet, mobilize, spread the word. This is how this works. When, you know, Scott's able to make things go viral. And when they go viral, that makes a big, big difference. So we invite you to be a part of that and follow uh, him at all the handles I just named. Scott, thank you, buddy, as always. Appreciate you and all you do. Thank you, Mark, for all you did for our country the last few years. Well, no, and, and your life, obviously. <laughs> well, thank you, and con and continue to give us assignments too, buddy. All right, we all you need that. No, folks, we don't need to be. No time for just being spectators. Let's do something. You know, we get frustrated. The best way to deal with your trauma is to take action. Sit around, just dwell on, it and think about it. Get depressed. Take action. Scott's got action plan. He's got the work to work. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, subscribe, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been Made Plain. Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant with my first daughter, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals, synthetic colorants, and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. I believe women deserve to know what they are putting in their bodies and why. So at four months pregnant, I quit my job to reinvent the prenatal vitamin. We scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies and third-party tested for heavy metals and microbes. And this year, we were awarded the Purity Award from the Clean Label Project, the supplement safety certification that tests for 200 harmful chemicals and toxins. With Ritual, you'll know where your ingredients come from and why we use them. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast.